This is the head of the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus. Earlier this year, he DM'd me on Twitter. He said I should come to the DRC and see for myself how complicated Ebola was to control there. A few months later, I was flying to the Eastern DRC. One of the first things I noticed once I landed was the presence of tanks and soldiers. There's been decades of conflict in the area, and war and political instability are really at the root of why Ebola has been so hard to contain. This is a photo outside of an Ebola center. There are soldiers stationed behind sandbags at the entrance. The reason they're there is that this particular Ebola center had already been attacked twice, had been burnt to the ground, but at the same time, the presence of soldiers might be intimidating for some people. And that's on top of the fact that Ebola is a terrifying disease, and then the response to Ebola is also strange and terrifying. Someone in this household was diagnosed with Ebola, and now there's these Ebola responders dressed in these weird white Tyvek suits who come in and just douse all of somebody's belongings in chlorine. Some people have even set up chairs to watch the whole scene. But the care being offered to people is improving compared to previous outbreaks. Here's within an Ebola treatment center, and there's a plastic cube around a patient that allows family members to see in and patients to see out. In addition, this time, there's not only intravenous fluids that are given to every patient, but people are getting experimental Ebola drugs. And two of those Ebola drugs have now been proven to be up to 90% effective if people get them early. And the other bright spot is that there's now an Ebola vaccine that's been widely deployed in this outbreak for the first time. So you would think that this outbreak would be contained by now, but it's not. And there's a few reasons for that. One of them is that it's difficult to know who is at high risk. Also, vaccine teams can't vaccinate people who don't want to be vaccinated. And people aren't getting experimental drugs if they don't go into Ebola centers. What they'll do first is go to the places they're used to going. So that could be a pastor, it could be a traditional healer, it could be a small pharmacy or a small clinic. These sort of pharmacies are just all over the place. There's hundreds of them. Uh, you can see like a snake around a chalice, that's sort of an insignia. This is a photo inside of one of these health facilities. This woman is feverish and rather than have her mix with all of the other patients that might show up there, They've decided to put patients who have symptoms of Ebola in one area so that they're separated from others. So in this room, a mother is sitting by her child, and the doctor thinks the child should perhaps go to an Ebola treatment center. But the mother doesn't want her child to go, and if you can put yourself in the mother's shoes, the Ebola center is about an hour away. She'd have to be separated. She can't hold her child. She can't be there next to him. This is the kind of mistrust or reluctance that comes from a place of love and concern and not conflict. This is a photo of an Ebola checkpoint. These are set up to contain the outbreak. What happens is when people go past, they have their temperature taken, and if they have a fever, they're not allowed to travel through a checkpoint. And these checkpoints have been very helpful, but at the same time, they're not bulletproof. People with Ebola have now traveled to Goma in North Kivu, which is a very international city, and they've now traveled 700 kilometers south. What all of this comes down to is that Dr. Tedros has a huge amount of work in front of him. The world has completely ignored a humanitarian crisis in the DRC for a quarter century. That crisis is why the Ebola outbreak has now killed more than 2,000 people. And if we keep ignoring Ebola too, it's only going to help the virus spread.